Hi team, Sandy and Tom from The Paddle School. In this video, we're gonna discuss five common errors that you might have with your volleys. Yeah, and if you're making any one of these errors, you're not reaching your potential on the court, so let's get into it. Common error number one is a non-existent ready position or the racket just dangling down by the side, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, we see it a lot. The racket is down by the side, the players aren't ready, and in a way, a lot of players do this because they're so focused on reading the ball, they're trying to see what's happening in the point, they forget they've got to have their racket up, so when the ball comes to them, they're shocked. And it's, it takes them by surprise, doesn't it? So what we want to see is this ready position with the racket vertical like this, a little bit of space between the racket and the body, and almost a nice athletic ready position, and that will instantly improve your volleys. A bonus tip for this one is when the ball goes past you and your partner is hitting, keep your racket up. We see it so often where the ball goes past, the racket goes down because players think they're not hitting the ball, but actually you've got to have your ready position all the time so you're ready for that ball. Common error at number two is the wrong grip. We often see this, don't we, Tom, of players coming in, the wrong grip and patting the ball. Yeah, the old frying pan grip. We see this a lot. The trouble with this grip is that you end up basically hitting every volley flat. You can't hit any slice on it, so you have to get that continental grip on the volley. Yeah, and continental grip, you find that, slide the hand down the racket into this position, also called the chopping grip. And from here, the only way you can use it on your volley is if you turn your shoulder. Yeah, if you don't turn your shoulders, it's very uncomfortable and that's why people slip into the frying pan grip. So, got to remember, turn those shoulders if you want to keep the continental grip. Before we go into the next common error, if you are really serious about improving your volleys or your game for that matter, you should definitely check out our platform. Yeah, on our platform we have volley courses for beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. So it takes you through that whole journey from having a basic volley to a really advanced volley. And as a member, you can send in videos of your volley and Sandy, myself and the team will give you feedback specifically for your volley. Common error number three, Tom, let's talk court position. Yeah, my favorite topic of the day. So court position at the net. Sometimes we see players getting too close to the net. So they're just coming in far too close. And what this does is it means you have less time when the ball's coming into you and also you leave loads of space behind you. The other thing we see is players too far away from the net. So Sandy, what is the ideal position for net players? Ideally, when you come to net at the start of the point, you want to have the second post as a guideline and be one small step in front. And I think a lot of the problem with the court position comes during the point. Players might start in a good position and they hit a volley and then they watch and hit a volley and they watch taking steps forward, but not recovering that position. Or they might be playing the point and as the point is being played, they end up just drifting back into this position here. So a key to this is be really conscious of your court position throughout the point. Common error number four is the split step. Most tennis players coming to paddle do it automatically, particularly if they've been trained in tennis. Why is this a common error? There's, well, there's so many benefits of doing the split step in terms of balance, being ready for the ball. I like to think of it a bit like a goalkeeper in football where, where you come in and if you're on your toes in this split step, you can react to different balls that are coming in. If you don't have that split step and you're running, chances are you're not gonna be ready for certain balls that come different ways and you're literally just gonna be charging forwards. Yeah, we often see that if there's no split step, then players are on their heels and they end up being very reactive. Or like you say, when you're running, either maybe from the serve is a good example, where you might serve and you run in and there's no split step and you come in and then you are hitting the ball in an awkward position. Yeah, so the split step, you time this when your opponent is contacting the ball and it's a tiny bounce on the toes to prepare you for the next shot. Common error number five is big swings, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, there's a time and a place for big swings and it's usually when you have time to do the big swing. Most of the time in paddle, the court is small, the ball is coming usually quite quickly. You're not gonna have time to take big swings. Now, if you do have time and it's an easier ball when you want to finish it, that's the time to do a big swing, but most of the time you'll have a short, compact swing on your volley. I think the difficulty is with these big swings is you get faster racket head speed. So if you are even slightly off with the angle of your racket face or the timing, the result can be catastrophic. Whereas that, if you are have a short, compact swing, it's much easier to get the timing and be more accurate with your volleys. And a cheeky bonus tip, is don't go for too much. That is another common error, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, especially from tennis. You might be used to going for the lines thinking that is the best volley for me, but actually in paddle, it's not the case. You don't need to go for the lines. You don't need to take that risk to get the result that you want. 
better to play percentage. So these are the five most common mistakes with the volley. For the extended version in our exclusive content on our platform, we're gonna do three more, so go and check that out. If you want to see those, I'll put the link down to thepowerschool.com down here, and up here, a video of the 10 biggest beginner mistakes if you wanna check that out.